Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with one on the house. The biggest dessert news in years. That's what folks everywhere are calling Jell-O's new locked-in flavor. Never has Jell-O tasted so rich and delicious. Today, it's even better than ever, and all because of a wonderful new process that locks in all of Jell-O's grand flavor, keeps it from fading, keeps it at full strength till the moment you use it. Today, Jell-O's vivid original goodness is locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles where time can't touch it. It's protected against fading or changing in any way, and it comes out of the package just as rich and full-flavored as it went in. Prove it for yourself. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no heavy, fruity aroma, no sign of escaping flavor. But when you dissolve the Jell-O, you unlock its captive goodness. And out it pours for your pleasure. To so order Jell-O tomorrow, look for the big red letters on the box. And be sure to get Jell-O. The flavor never goes away. We put it in and it's there to stay. on the house played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to take you back three days and show you how Jack Benny entertained the gang on Thanksgiving. The time, 2 p.m. last Thursday. The scene, the kitchen of Jack's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack, Mary, and Rochester preparing the dinner. Take it away. Now, what else? Oh, yes. Uh, Rochester, hand me those little plates there, will you? Here you are, boss. Let's see. A black one for Phil, a green one for Alice, a black one for Don, a green one for Mrs. Wilson, a black one for Mary. Say, Jack, make mine a green one. I don't like ripe olives. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll switch you and Don. There. I'm hungry. I think I'll eat mine now. Drop that. <laughs> I don't want you to spoil your appetite. You know, we're having wild duck for our Thanksgiving dinner. No chip beef this year, eh? <laughs> Not unless we run short. Rochester, uh, what are you putting in that dressing? I thought a dash of gin would snap it up a little. <laughs> what? Who ever heard of putting gin in dressing? On Central Avenue, it's a must. <laughs> well, I don't want it in this dressing. And put that gin back in the first aid kit. <laughs> oh, Mary, take a look in the oven and see how the ducks are coming along. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was that? They're not quite done yet. <laughs> now, look, that noise came from some live ducks I've got in the basement. These ducks here should be done by now. Uh, what time did we put them in the oven, Rochester? About 10 o'clock last night. <laughs> Let's see, that's 16 hours. They're done all right. They sure look tender, don't they, Mary? Tender? The middle one looks like Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> what an imagination. Now, Rochester, take each duck and stuff the dressing in it. I ain't gonna touch old Humphrey. <laughs> Cut that out. Now, get busy and stuff those ducks. Okay, where's the shoehorn? You don't need a shoehorn. Now, let's see, a green olive for me, a black one for... Say, Jack, why don't you give those olives a little company and put some celery on the plate? Celery? Okay. Open the icebox and get some. I don't know the combination. <laughs> it's 45 right, 23 <laughs> back, and 10 right. That's it. Can I borrow your pencil, boss? Don't bother writing it down. I'm changing it tomorrow. <laughs> Now, where was I? Oh, yes, a green one for me, a black one for Billy Getz. That must be Dennis. Open the back door for him, Rochester. Yes, sir. 
Send that kid on an errand. He takes all day. Where'd he go, Jack? Over to Ronald Coleman's to borrow something. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're always borrowing from Mr. Coleman. That works both ways, Mary. Within the last year, he's borrowed over a dozen of my best eggs. Your eggs? Yes. His chickens laid them in your garage. <laughs> That doesn't make any difference. That's the same thing as the grapefruit near the fence. What hangs over is mine. Even Coleman's lawyer admits that. <laughs> well, don't ever hang your head over the fence or Coleman will pick your toupee. <laughs> ha, 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 I'm screaming. Here's the punch bowl you wanted, Mr. Benny. What is that? Here's the punch bowl you wanted. Thanks, kid. And what have you got in that bag? Some corn. Mr. Coleman says, please feed it to his chickens. <laughs> And feeding him plenty Now, Dennis, the gang will be here pretty soon So rub some of this burnt cork on your face Okay Burnt cork? What's that for? Uh, Dennis is going to help serve dinner tonight It's an emergency I hired Rochester's brother And he didn't show up uh, What happened to him, Rochester? I was wrong, boss He got 60 days instead of 30 <laughs> Oh, well, I can use him New Year's Eve Now, Dennis uh, Rochester will be busy here in the kitchen So it'll be your job to... Whoop, there's the front door Now, here's your chance to practice <clears throat> See you at the door, Sylvester. I'm going, Mr. Benny. I'm going. Say, <laughs> hey, that's all right. That boy does the worst blackface I ever heard. Not so easy. I'd like to hear you do Irish sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mary, we'll sit in the music room until the gang gets here. A jukebox and an old fiddle, and you call it a music room. Don't run down that jukebox, Mary. And incidentally, I wish you'd stop playing it with lifesavers. <laughs> You've got it all sticky. Mr. and Mrs. Wilson are here, Master Colonel Benny. Don't overdo it. <laughs> well, hello, Don, Peggy. Welcome to the Chateau Benny. Oh, hello, hello, Jack. Hello, hello Mary. Pleasure, Happy Mary. Well, you're looking fine, Peggy. Uh, take Mrs. Wilson's coat, Sylvester. Yeah, the yuck, yuck, yuck. Mm, I wish he'd hold it down a little. Huh? Well, two servants tonight. You're kind of putting on the dog, eh, Jack? Well, it's a big party. Gee, Peggy, I'm sure glad you and Don were able to come to dinner today. Yes, I am, too. Don's been gaining weight again, and I'm so happy he's someplace where he can't overeat. <laughs> <laughs> good, good <laughs> Well, I hate to disappoint you, Peggy But there's going to be plenty of food on that table Yes, and I love chipped beef We're having wild duck Now, let's have a little music while we're waiting Mary, uh, put a nickel in the jukebox I've only got one I'm saving it for the apple machine <laughs> All right, I'll put one in That is, if I've, um, if I've, uh... Here's a nickel, Jack Thanks uh, Say, here's one of Phil's records uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo He uh, sings a chorus on this one. Very cute, too. Wait till you hear it. Pardon me, boy. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Track 29. Then you can give me a shine. I can afford to board a Chattanooga Choo Choo. I've got my fare And just an inkling to spare You leave old Pennsylvania Station About a quarter to four Read the magazine And then you're in Baltimore Dinner on the diner Nothing could be finer Than to have your ham and eggs In Carolina When you hear the whistle Blow an eighth of the bar Then you know the Tennessee Is not very far Hurry up and call in Gotta get a rollin' Hoo-hoo, Chattanooga There you are There's gonna be a certain party at the station Satin and lace I used to call funny face She's gonna cry until I tell her that'll never wrong Ooh, Chattanooga choo-choo, won't you choo-choo me home? There's gonna be a certain party at the station Sad, sad, satin and lace I used to call my bunny, honey, funny face She's gonna cry Until I tell her that I'll never roam So Chattanooga choo-choo, hooey, hooey 
Chattanooga choo choo, hoo wee hoo wee, Chattanooga choo choo, won't you choo choo me home? Isn't Phil a ham? He even puts applause on the record. That was a good number, though. Yes, indeed. Uh, by the way, Peggy, I don't believe you've been in my music room before, have you? No, I haven't, Jack. And you've got some lovely old pieces here. Who furnished it? Harry's Hawk Shop. <laughs> I only got the melody in there. You know, Peggy, if you look around, you can get some of the... Uh-oh, here comes your boarder. Yeah. I wonder what happened to him, his arms in a sling. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Billingsley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Having company for dinner, I see. <laughs> Yes, yes, the others will be here pretty soon. Uh, won't you have a seat? Oh, thanks, I never touch them. <laughs> hmm. uh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, I noticed your arms in a sling. Uh, how did you happen to break it? I was putting on my long underwear this morning and I fell off the ladder. <laughs> oh, well, why do you have to climb a ladder to put on your underwear? When I say long, I mean long. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. Uh, won't you join us for dinner, Mr. Billingsley? We're having wild duck. No, I'll have a glass of dressing later. Good night. <laughs> hmm. It's getting more eccentric every day. But who else would pay me $800 a week for room and board? <laughs> An amazing character, you know? Mr. Benny, can I speak to you confidentially? It's very important. Oh, now what? Excuse me, folks. What is it, Rochester? Boss, those ducks ain't never gonna get tender. Why, what happened? I just stuck a fork in one of them and it kicked gravy all over me. <laughs> now that's ridiculous. It probably slid in the pan. That's all. You may be right, boss, but I don't think it would hurt to shoot them just once more. <laughs> Don't you dare. I shot those ducks. All you've got to do is cook them. I want dinner served as soon as Mr. and Mrs. Harris arrive. But, boys... Now, get back to the kitchen. Oh, sorry, folks. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, Rochester's having a little trouble with the ducks. It seems... <laughs> Well, everything will be all right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Jack, what was that noise? It sounded like a gunshot. How do I know? Well, folks, just as soon as every... There's someone at the door, Sylvester. Sylvester, answer the door. That's dough, boss. All right, answer the dough. <laughs> and don't shuffle, just walk. Say, Don, would you like a cocktail before dinner? Eh, Don? Definitely no. Hmm, well, <laughs> I can see who wears the pants in that family. With Don's, there's room for both of them. You said it. <laughs> Announcing Mr. and Mrs. Phil Harris. Phil! Hiya, Jackson. And Alice. 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 Hello, Alice. Hello, Alice. Phil. Happy Well, well, Alice, I'm sure happy you were able to come to dinner. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for anything, Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> she calls me Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know everybody here, don't you, Alice? Hello, Alice. Oh, why, Peggy, I haven't seen you since our trip to New York. And Alice, uh, you know Mary Livingston, huh? Oh, well, of course I do. Hello, Mary. So nice seeing you again. Hello. <laughs> Hello. That's a fine greeting. Who cares how many fan clubs she's got? <laughs> Mary, don't pay any attention to her, Alice. You see, Mary is always jealous of any girl that shines up to me. Well, who's shining up to you? <laughs> well, I mean that you... I mean... Explain that, Jackson. <laughs> don't get excited, Phil. Now, look, fellas, let's not have a brawl. I don't want duck stains all over the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is the uh, first time you've ever been to my house, isn't it, Alice? Yes, and I, I think it's furnished in very good taste. 
What did you mean, Phil, I should wear my old clothes? <laughs> Why, Phil, you little rascal. Uh, say, Mary, call up Luella Parsons and tell her Alice Faye is visiting me. She'll never believe it. She will, too. And call Harrison Carroll. Say, Phil, I want to congratulate you on your performance last night and the courtship of Miles Dandy. Yeah, it's the best play our night school ever put on, Don. Oh, yes, Phil, you were excellent as Priscilla. But as long as you were playing the part of a girl, why didn't you shave before you went out on the stage? I didn't want people to think I was on the level. <laughs> well, it spoiled it a little for me. Uh, by the way, Phil, uh, use the ashtray, Peggy. These rugs are expensive. <laughs> uh, by the way, Phil... That's a girl. Uh, by, uh... <laughs> Uh, by the way, Phil, uh, uh, did you, <laughs> Phil, did you, uh, did you get those flowers I sent you before the performance? Oh, yeah, thanks for the Christmas anthemums. <laughs> Christmas anthemum? Phil, I told you last night it's one word, chrysanthemum. Oh, lay off, honey, I don't want no lecture on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Behave yourself, Phil, or I won't read that book to you anymore. Uh, what book are you reading to him, Alice? Oh, you know, Jack. A is for apple, so round and red. <laughs> B is for butter, you spread it on bread. What, are you kidding? C is for crackers, you eat them in bed. I know them all. <laughs> See, you'll, you'll be up to the Rover Boys pretty soon. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you folks, but I'm going to have a cocktail before dinner. Oh, don't, Jack. You always act so silly. I do not. One cocktail and it's... Look, fellas, I'm a Spanish dancer. Oh. A Spanish dancer? By that time, he's wearing a lampshade. Well, someone's got to put a little life in the parties around this town. Oh, Sylvester. Yeah, the, yeah, the boss. Hmm. Go out in the kitchen and tell Rochester we're ready for dinner. I have a gwine. Hold that barn. Lift that bed. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Well, Alice, I hope you're good and hungry. I'm on a diet myself. You see, uh, I have to be on account of the new picture I'm making. I knew he'd get around to that. Quiet. You see, I'm working opposite Carol Lombard, and I must look my best. Well, Jack, I've seen you in pictures before, and as I recall, you always look very nice. Yes, I imagine I do, but of course, I look much younger on the screen. Oh, much, much, much. <laughs> Mary. You know, Alice, now that we're both at 20th Century Fox, maybe you and I will be working together soon. <laughs> Who knows? I think we'd make a swell team. Yes, uh, you with your youth and beauty, and <laughs> me with my suave, debonair charm. Mm. <laughs> You're right, Phil. He is hammy. <laughs> you know, Alice, the next time I see Mr. Zanuck... Dinner is served, folks. Walk. Do not run to the dining room. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. this way. Yeah. This way, Hold everybody. On, now, me, Don, yeah. you take Alice. Phil, you take Peggy. And Mary... Oh, Mary, call up Hedda Hopper and Jimmy Starr and Herb Stein. Tell them that Alice Faye's having dinner with me today. Okay. And call Sidney Skalski, too. Skalski? Yes. Who's going to boost him up to the telephone? <laughs> He's got a ladder like Billingsley. All right, everybody. Grab your seats. And take your time now. There's plenty for all. Come oh, on. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, 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 Mm, boy, what a dinner. Say, this dressing is delicious, Jack. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Rochester, serve Mrs. Harris some more duck. Will you have another piece of duck, Alice? No, thanks. I'm still chewing on my first piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got beautiful teeth. Use them. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think the duck is very tasty, don't you, Mary? Yeah, but the next time you go out shooting, be more careful. Mine's full of buckshot. Mary, that's what that bowl is for. Dump the buckshot in a bowl. <laughs> oh, That's it. Personally, I think this is the finest meal that Pass I... me that bowl, will you, Mary? Here you are, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> well, I really banged away at that one, didn't I? But I still say this is a lovely dinner. Yeah, everything from soup to lead. 
never mind. And have another cranberry. One cranberry? You're supposed to have cranberry sauce. Well, squash it. Are you helpless? <laughs> matter with you anyway? <laughs> oh, Rochester. Yes, boy. Uh, bring me a sharper knife. I got Humphrey. <laughs> Say, Alice. Alice, I have a real treat for you. After dinner, I'll take you downstairs and show you Carmichael, my polar bear. Oh, that's swell. I love animals. You do? Have you got any pets, Alice? Oh, just Phil, my little reformed wolf. <laughs> A <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yes, sir. Some more, uh, some more dressing, Don? No, thanks. By the way, Jack, where's Dennis? Didn't you invite him to dinner? Yes, I wonder what happened to the kid. Me too. <laughs> Mary, now don't give it away. Oh, Sylvester, have we heard from Mr. Day? Yeah, the he phoned and left word that he was having dinner with Miss Hetty Lamar. <laughs> Hetty Lamar? <laughs> that boy sure gets around, don't he? <laughs> All right, Sylvester, stop leaning on the table and get busy. Enjoying the food, Peggy? Oh, it's fine, Jack. And the dressing is delicious. What's in it? I really don't know. Oh, Rochester? Yes, boss? What's in this dressing? Woody! <laughs> He's like all good chefs, Peggy. Just won't give away his secrets. Right? <laughs> get another bowl, Rochester. This one's full. <laughs> Everything all right, Alice? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've never been to such a novel dinner party. Imagine, Phil, I got a prize in my dressing. A prize? Uh-huh, look, a shoehorn. <laughs> <laughs> that is a novelty, isn't it? I got a red cross button in mine. <laughs> well, hand it over, I joined yesterday. That reminds me everybody should, especially this year. Rochester, I think we'll have our dessert and coffee in the music room. Okay, boy. That is, if everybody's had enough duck. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, 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 right. well, come on, great. come on, let's go in the music room. Uh, what are we having for dessert, Jack? What do you think? I'll bet a thousand dollars it's Jello with that new locked-in flavor. You win, Don. The flavor never goes away. They, they put, put it in, in and it's there to stay. stay. <laughs> <laughs> Say, let's have some entertainment while we're waiting for the coffee. Yeah, what do we do? Well, we can. Oh, I know. Hey, look at me, fellas. Jack, yeah, take that bowl of fruit off your head. You don't look anything like Carmen Miranda. Well, somebody's got to entertain. Well, what about Alice singing a song for us? Yeah, what about it, Alice? Come on, Alice. Come on, Alice. Come on. Come on. Come on. You hear that, Alice? Will you sing for us? Uh, wait till I finish chewing this duck, huh? All right. Now, tell you what. If you sing, I'll accompany you on the violin. No, 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 Jackson. No, not that. Oh. <laughs> All right, all right. Come on, Alice. Uh, what's that song? <laughs> Alice, what's that song you did in your new picture, Weekend in Havana? And you mean <laughs> Tropical Magic? Yeah, that's it. You sing Tropical Magic, and I'll pull rabbits out of a hat. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Alice is going to sing. <laughs>
mañana, but never goodbye. Music is playing, tropical magic. You'll have me saying adios to my heart, adios to my heart. Well, anyway, folks, that's just about what happened at Jack's house last Thursday. Alice sang her song, and then we all played games and had a swell time. And just as we were leaving, we could hear Rochester calling Jack. Benny! Mr. Benny! What is it, Rochester? What do I do with all this dump that's left over? Well, we can have it tomorrow night. Uh, make... What about the mashed potatoes and all this... Be very tasty. Okay, uh... Well, make a pie out of them. Cranberry pie is delicious, you know. Okay. Oh, say, boss. What? I think we ought to turn this buckshot over to the government for national defense. <laughs> That's a very good idea. It's early yet, so I'm going out to see a movie. Is that still playing around? I don't mean Charlie's amp. <laughs> see you later. Good night, boss. Good night, Rochester. <laughs> One of Mary Livingston's favorite Jell-O desserts is a swell treat called peach and banana mold. Because I think you like it too, I'm going to pass it right along. It's an easy recipe to remember. Its main ingredients are canned sliced peaches, sliced bananas, and lime Jell-O. And you combine them like this. Make up one package of lime Jell-O as you usually do. Next, arrange one half cup of canned sliced peaches on the bottom of the mold and pour the Jell-O over them. Then slice one banana into the jello and chill until firm. When you unmold it, you'll have a beautiful three-layer dessert. Golden peach slices on top, sliced bananas embedded on the bottom, and in between them and surrounding them, clear, glistening emerald lime jello. Many grocers are featuring canned sliced peaches and lime jello all next week. Get both and make up this grand treat. Just be sure when you buy to ask for jello. Because Jell-O's new locked-in flavor gives you all the flavor, always. This is the last number of the eighth program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time. Well, Alice, it was awfully sweet of you to come over tonight and show the folks what happened last Thursday, and your song was really wonderful. Oh, thanks, Jackson. Jackson. She called me Jackson. Good night, folks. Al Clay appeared on our program tonight for courtesy of 20th Century Fox Pictures. In gelatin desserts, it's Jell-O. In puddings, it's Jell-O pudding. And every well-stocked pantry should include them both. Jell-O puddings are rich, luscious desserts that you make with milk. And they come in three popular flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. Jell-O chocolate pudding is a pudding that even Grandma would be proud to make. It has a smooth, creamy, homemade goodness all its own. A mellow chocolate flavor developed exclusively for Jell-O puddings by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. Tomorrow, when you order Jell-O, ask for Jell-O puddings. They're just like Grandma's, only more so. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.